What is going on everyone? Today I have a point A to point B guide on creating Unreal Engine 5.6 MetaHuman Cinematics. I'm going to walk you through from opening Unreal Engine for the first time to our final result here, a simple B-roll shot with motion capture performance. So I've been seeing Unreal Engine used across multiple verticals with Netflix shows like Love, Deaf Robots, uh, in film production for large budget or indie studios, and even with Instagram short skits or live streaming, so on and so forth. There's a lot that you can do with this, so I feel like it's very worth exploring. That being said, because there are a lot of different routes you can take for this, I'm going to keep my guide straightforward in general. So for any additional steps or things that you can do, I'm going to leave references to other information either that I made or that other awesome people have made down in the description below. So with that said, let's get started. First off in the Epic Games launcher, we're going to update to the 5.6 version for our new features with MetaHumans directly built into the engine. No more having to go to a browser to create your MetaHumans and import your assets. You also want to make sure that we go over here to the options and you enable the MetaHuman Creator Core Data. Go ahead and click Apply, and then we can create our first blank project here. So once we're in the engine, we're going to go up to Edit and Plugins. We're going to search for MetaHumans and just go ahead and enable everything that we need here, part of the MetaHuman Core Kit. Once you've enabled that, you can go ahead and restart. So now that we've restarted, I'm going to come down here to the content drawer. I'm going to go over and right click in this blank space and I'm going to create a new MetaHuman character. So now you can double click on this and we now have this MetaHuman character creator built directly into Unreal Engine. So there is a ton that you can do with this. I made a full tutorial talking about how you can take the likeness of a specific person, mainly the bone structure, and transfer that onto a MetaHuman identity. I'm going to leave a link to that down below just for testing purposes here. I'm just going to use one of the preset characters, but of course, take your time here if you want to create a custom character. So next up, we can go ahead and create the full rig for this character. Once that's done, you can get an animation preview down here, and then I'm going to go ahead and download 4K textures for this one as well. Now, very important from this step. This is where you can export the facial mesh and the body mesh to any other software for clothing or for additional customization. So if you go up to this MetaHuman character tab, you can see you can directly export them right from here. Either way, once you're ready with the character in of itself, we're just going to click assemble. I'll save this and then we can close down this character creator window. Now you see I have my body mesh, I have my face mesh, and I have my character blueprint. So again, from here, you can right click on the body or the face. You can go to asset actions and you can export that as a simple FBX. There are a lot of different options for preparing MetaHuman clothing. I'm not going to cover all of them. Ideally, what I would do is create all of my animations first and then bring my character mesh into something like Marvelous Designer and use the same processes, which I've talked about on YouTube before. I actually have an entire character creator course mainly within Blender and Marvelous Designer, but you can replace the Blender aspect of that course with our Unreal Engine MetaHumans if you'd like to get more in-depth with clothing and clothing simulations. For the majority of this video, I'm just going to use some of these MetaHuman-ready clothing that you can find for free on the Fab Asset Store. These ones should work perfectly fine, so we'll go ahead and download them, and I'll just click Add to Project, and I'll select my project here. So now you can see in our content drawer, we have that quantum character folder, which is going to include all of our blueprints and our additional meshes. For the environment, I'm also going to go to the Fab Store and we'll just find something which can fill in as a nice little free environment here. So now I can go to this modular sci-fi base I found. I'll go to the map section and we'll double click on the map to open up this preset asset. Now, for one of the most important parts, I'm going to change around some of these settings in the directional light to create the lighting that I want. And I think that in terms of customization as a whole, this is a part of the process that I spent the most time on. And I recommend you do the same. For me, again, I changed the temperature of the directional light. You can click, I'm pretty sure, Control L to directly move the sun location just with your mouse. I'm also going to go change the exponential height fog. I'll change some of the scattering distribution just to create some of these god rays coming through the window here, just to create a nice look. And again, just experimenting and trying to find some nice light setups which work well for my scene. Once you've done that, we can go back to our content drawer for our MetaHuman. We can drag the blueprint MetaHuman directly into our scene. 
I'm just going to make some adjustments to the location and scale for the character, making sure the feet are aligned with the ground. And now I can go in and swap in those clothing assets that we downloaded from the store before. So all I have to do is select my blueprint character, go down to the body mesh section here, find which body mesh is selected and swap that in with our downloaded metahuman ready character clothing, which I already have set. You can see we have one with a hat and then we have one with no head model as well. And that's looking good so far. Let's go ahead and create a camera so that we can start setting up these cinematics. I'm going to go to the Cine section and drag in a Cine camera actor. And I'll take the location properties for that camera and just reposition it so that it's looking at my character from this sideways view. We can also come down here to the current camera settings and you can set this up just like you would with a camera in real life where we're controlling the aperture. If you want to have some depth of field, I'm going to bump that down to something like 1.7. And now I'm going to go back to the cinematic drop down here and I'm going to create a level sequence so that we can actually start animating this character and everything else within our scene. So simply we can select that camera actor and we can drag it right into the timeline like this. If you'd like to, you can swap in and out of the viewport or the camera view from this button here. And we can drag down to the camera options and you can find all of these transform values, which you can simply add some keyframes to, to create a little zoom or pan, whatever you want to do with the camera in of itself. Now you can see here we're running into some LOD issues with the groom, specifically his mustache, kind of clipping in and out the closer you get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my character. I'm going to scroll down to the mustache groom part of this blueprint here, and I'm just going to change this LOD bias until we get rid of that clipping. So as you can see, issue is fixed. If you're running into any other LOD issues with the face or any other parts of the textures, you may need to go in and set the LOD to zero. And now our character is ready for animation. So in the past, I've relied on pre-made animations as placeholders. Well, today I'm going to show you the entire process for motion capture using a Rococo SmartSuit Pro. In terms of setting it up, it was very simple. Rococo has a lot of great guides out there for getting up and running. And this is something that I feel can take this process to an entirely new level. Being able to have full control over the hands, the face, the body of our character really helps breathe life into our animations. So I recorded a lot more than I'm showing here. Um, today, I'm just going to show you the basic body animation to keep it simple. So either way, I recorded my animations. I'm going to export those as an FBX with the target being Unreal Engine 5 Mannequin. And now we can hop back into Unreal Engine to set these up. So in Unreal, I simply drag and drop that FBX file directly into my content drawer here. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and go to retarget animation. And I'm going to select my body mesh here as the target skeletal mesh. Once I've done that, I can search for the specific animation that I recorded, which I named typing right here, kind of just typing at this terminal, standing up, looking, and then turning around. Very simple. I'm going to go ahead and retarget those and then export that back out. And of course, make sure you drag your blueprint character directly into the sequence first. I'm going to click the plus sign and I'm going to add the body mesh into here as well. Under that body mesh, I'm again going to click the plus sign. I'm going to go to animation. And now when you search for the typing animation, which I've imported from Rococo, you'll see it here after our retargeting. So now we have our animation applied to our character with our custom face. I'm going to go ahead and change in the composition a bit now that we have some differences in how they're moving. I'll move the camera in a bit closer. I'll tweak the lighting a bit more, adding some backlighting from our directional light, which I rotated as well as messing around with a key light on his face here as well. Now, as you can see, if I just pause it right here, you can still see parts of the facial mesh poking through the body. So I'm going to show you some simple fixes for that. There's actually an entire guide where you can go in and change the blueprint material to create a simple mask, which is very useful. So again, a link to that will be down below just because that's something which I think requires an entirely separate video to set up. What you can do is drag in the facial mesh so that you have it there as a reference. I'm going to open up the material that I've applied here and I'm going to show you the setup here where you can either change it with a crop or you can change it with texture painting as well. So again, you can find a link below to that guide that'll walk you through changing the blueprint to be able to add some of this extra functionality. And now I can just take a look at the neck and the performance and paint the parts that I don't want to be showing. There's also a little bit of the head mesh poking through the back of the clothing here. Now you could go through and create cloth simulations, collisions. I'm just going to take an easier route here. I'm going to go into the blueprint for our body mesh. 
I'm going to switch to deform and then vertex sculpting. And I'm simply just going to move that back color a little bit back so that there's some extra room here and we won't have any more clipping. And from there, everything with our character is finished. You can go in and create any other camera angles, any other shots. Again, I'm going to dive deeper onto this into the next tutorial. Let's go ahead and just show you how to simply render out this shot in of itself. You want to go to edit plugins and enable the movie render queue plugin. Once you've done that directly in the sequencer, you can click on this clipboard here and you can set up any of your render settings. I'm going to render this out at 4k. I'm going to leave some links below to some useful render settings just for adding in some anti-aliasing and controlling the depth of field. And that is part one of our tutorial going from point A to point B, creating our metahuman animation. This was a super fun process. Again, I think there's so many amazing things that you can do with this. So I'm excited to dive deeper and get a little bit more advanced in the next one, talking about facial animation for this character. Let me know in the comments below anything that you would like me to cover for this. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting and I'll see you in the next one.